We should have just let the kitty cats lick it. We could have. But I don't want kitty cats live on my crafts. To get started with this craft, I'm actually going to be peeling the label off of some cans so I have some clean aluminum for the ornaments. I know I showed how to do this in another video in the past, but in case you haven't seen that one, that was the music can lanterns for Black Lung Brewing Company. I'm just trying not to bend up the can too much. Once you get your label off, you check for sticky. Some of them leave a ton, some of them don't leave much at all. This one barely left any, so I'm going to grab the goo gone. So this is goo and adhesive remover. I love this stuff. It smells like orange clean and it's amazing. So just a tiny little bit will do. You just kind of rub that in with your thumbs, let it sit. Uh, it is quite oily when you go to wash it off. Make sure to use Dawn dish soap or something like that because it'll take all that oily residue off of there. Otherwise, you know, you'll have messes on the can that are unrelated to the sticky. You don't want that. Nobody wants non-sticky messes. Wait, maybe they do. I don't know. Either way, I just kind of rub it with my thumbs until that sticky bit is gone. Oh, take a little dish soap. That was a lot. Whoops. Rub that in. You may have to wash twice with the dish soap just to make sure you get all the oily residue off of there. But when it's all finished, if you have a nice clean can with no sticky residue and no label. Next is cutting off the top and bottom so we have a flat sheet of aluminum that we can then cut our ornament shapes out of. There we go, step one done. Did you tell them that they gotta clean the inside of the can? Oh, you always rinse the inside of the can. I probably should have said that, you're right. Okay. Um, and an empty can. Yeah, <laughs> make sure to, well, I mean, you can peel the label and clean a full can, but if you go to cut out pieces from it, you're gonna make a mess if it's full. Um, so make sure it's an empty can and you've rinsed the inside. Honestly, when you cut into it, you're still going to have to kind of clean the inside of the can anyway, because even when you've rinsed, there's always a chance that there's a little bit of residue left from the beer. Next step, because I found it makes it a lot easier, I remove the pop tab and I use a regular hand can opener along the top rim. This makes it a lot easier to get in there with a pair of scissors. Uh, there will be sharp little bits there. Do be careful when you're working with the aluminum cans because you will cut yourself and I'm telling you right now you think a paper cuts bad or a cardboard cuts bad. Oh no, the aluminum cuts are really bad. Don't do that. Looks like this still needs another rinse too. <laughs> Fun. We are all set then. I am going to get this cut into a clean sheet so I can use it for our ornaments. Cheers everyone! Doing a beer craft! Gotta have a beer! And we are going to have a beer from Frankenmuth Brewery, who we're making this lovely craft for. This is called Old Detroit Amber Ale. It says it has a smooth, subtle finish, and it's named for the city that continues to take a stand for quality. Old Detroit is crafted in small batches with a deep respect for the art of brewing. Go ahead, take your top off. Okay. Not you. Oh, let me put it back on. By the way, see, they have all their little docks and stuff. Bark, bark, <laughs> bark. Lovely color. Old Detroit Amber Ale. Let's see what it smells like. Ooh, it smells really sweet. Mm. Like the caramely sweetness hits really hard on the nose. Hmm. I think I'm gonna like this one. There's there's a spice. I smell a spice too. Not like 
Christmas spice, not that, but um, there's a hint of something else in there. Cheers everyone to another craft. Oh wow. Ooh, super fun. Definitely a spice, not cinnamon, but like a, a clove nutmeg kind of spice. But it still doesn't taste Christmassy. It, I mean, it's not their Christmas ale. They have a Christmas ale that was all spice. Not all spice. It was. It tasted a lot like spice. All the spices. It had all the spices. Except for like dill. There was no dill in that. Oh. <laughs> but uh, this one definitely has a spice edge to it that uh, kind of just bisects the flavor right through at a diagonal. It kind of just wipes through. This is a weird way of saying this, but it's what I'm tasting and I don't know how else to say it. Um, when you taste it, you have this crossover of the spice. You do get a caramely sweetness that lingers. It's the end of the flavor and that sits real pretty after you've had the beginning with that malty goodness. But this is a lovely amber. I'm glad we got a whole six pack of this, babe, because they're far and it'd be hard to get another <laughs> one. Mm. Close to Frankenmuth, try their amber. Because, wow. All right, we're heading upstairs and we're going to get back to the craft. We've got our freshly cleaned can right here. I'm going to get to cutting so we can take off the top and bottom and have a nice flat sheet. Watch your fingers, watch your hands, so you don't get cut, because this stuff hurts. And I have a sheet that needs to be cleaned, obviously, because I'm still seeing some things in there, even though I have washed this can out. Before I go and rinse that, I'm actually going to take care of some of these sharp edges, because I really don't want to get cut while I'm doing this. I'm going to run this along the edge of the table to try and unbend it a bit throw away all the extra little bits so they don't get on the floor and I step on them. I'm gonna give this a clean and we will get started on the stencils for our ornaments. Shiny and clean. For this craft I'm also going to be using foam board as the backing of these ornaments. My thought process when I'm coming up with stencils is always Construction paper, because I love construction paper. It is wonderful stuff. And I need my ruler as well. I do, however, know that I would like it to be four inches tall. Okay. So that should be the height. Now width, two and a half. All right, looking good so far. For the base and the top of the cans, I do want it to be curved, as a normal can looks when you're looking at it. Just about a half an inch high. On either side is fine. It looks like I'm freehanding a curve. Where's the center point of that? There. Here we go. Do the same thing up top. Then another half inch and another half inch. Line that across. One and a quarter point. I need to look at an actual beer can. This is looking like a soup can. <laughs> looking at a actual can here. It has this curve in down here and the curve up top. So it'll come in a quarter inch. Okay. Curve that gentle. Come in up top. Curve that gentle. Come in up top. Then we're gonna do our 
curve. Looks slightly better. Then we're gonna come down here. Pretty good. Not perfect, but so few things are. And the label would also be curved along here, following that same curve from before. I have made my stencil. I gave myself a lot of extra squares in case I needed to try a few times. Obviously I made some mistakes, had to go back and change some things, but I'm feeling pretty good about this one. So I'm going to cut out the stencil. I'm going to trace it onto my foam board. My intention is to make a <laughs> six pack of ornaments for them. So next I have to cut this out. All right, fantastic. Got my cutout. Now I'm going to cut that out of the foam board here. Now remember the foam board, well, if you saw my do-it-yourself shadow box for Grumpy Troll Brewing Company, uh, this stuff is a little rough on the edges when you cut it and you gotta sand down the edges afterwards, so keep that in mind. One down. You know, I found the utility knife worked better last time. pieces off. Good. That will work. Like I said, I'm going to be cleaning this up as well with um, sandpaper. I'm putting cuts all over this table. I should have brought up my cutting board. If you don't want to damage your table, use a cutting board when you use the utility knife. Just so you all know. Not perfect, but workable. So what I might do is actually tape this on and then just cut around it. our little can. Once we have our aluminum cut out and our foam board cut out, I am actually going to double check that she is nowhere in the vicinity because I'm about to use super glue. And we all know what happens when she's around when there's super glue. The world ends. It's not a good thing. Please be careful when using super glue. It does not come off of fingers and hands easily. Um, that way. Try to line it up as close as possible. I'm done touching this for now. I do need to put something on it that is heavy so that it will lay flat and dry properly. All right, ladies and gents, we have here our yeah, semi-finished ornaments. We have the backing on, everything's glued down okay. I did go in with the goo gun and remove some of the more egregious glue mistakes I made. But because the glue is finished, she was officially safe again, just so y'all know. Obviously, I haven't cleaned up the edges yet. That's going to come after. The next step is to start doing the labels. However, it's beer craft. I need a beer pour. Once again, we're going to be doing a beer from Frankenmuth Brewery. 
And this one is called their Little Bavaria Pilsner. German Purity, American Crafted. 12 fluid ounce bottle. And once again, I'm not seeing an ABV on the bottle itself. Oh wait, ha ha, they have one. Classic Gold Refreshing Floral Aroma. Crisp Dry Finish. 5.2 ABV. 26 IBU. Obviously this label got stuck on a little funny, but I'm sure the beer will taste just fine. All right, I got myself my go ahead, take your top off bottle opener. Got our cute little dachshund here. I loved the sound effect. I love that the bottle is gone and I don't have to throw it away. Everything was a win. <laughs> Let's give this lovely little Bavaria Pilsner a nice pour. Golden color. Mixed bubbles on top. Off-white head. Let's see how this smells. Flowers. Full up flowers. Walking into a plant nursery. That was the scent I got. Or a greenhouse. It smells very, very green, very, very fresh. And there's almost a little bit of pine, a little bit of the pine rosin? Resin? People have called me out for saying rosin and resin wrong a couple times. And, okay, so with the... Where I knew the word from first was uh, use rosin on violin bows, because I was a music teacher and had to learn the string instruments too. So I knew rosin from that. So I guess it's resin then? But then what's the one stuff we use for uh, winter? Because I was a bowler too, and we used either resin or rosin for that, for your hands, so they wouldn't slip. I'm not sure. Resin, rosin. Either way, I hope you'll all forgive me as I eventually figure it out. But it might be like first round and round one, where I never truly learn it. Either way, Merry Christmas. Cheers to you, Frankenmuth, because your beer was amazing, and I really hope you enjoy your gift as soon as I can actually finish it. <laughs> Cheers, everyone. Let's see what this tastes like. Hmm. Blueberry. I got blueberry on the front without the sweet. I have violets. And if baby's breath has a taste that anyone knows of, that's what this would taste like. There's a little bit of bitterness. I'm getting the, the piney um, resin rosin on the ending. That is very nice. It's very dry finish, but it coats the mouth. I do love a great Pilsner. And occasionally they're difficult to find because some of them are well, just rough. This one is very smooth, very refreshing. I could totally see having this on a nice hot day or in an overly heated craft room because I'm always cold so it's like I'd say 85 or so in here. <laughs> Which is where I'm happy. Lovely Pilsner. Highly recommended. And it's going to be the perfect accoutrement to me finishing off these lovely ornaments. Cheers everyone. <laughs> I drew up some possible designs. We are going to start with my cute little begging dachshund. Now, obviously I tried to draw him first. Didn't turn out so perfect. The second one's nice. Pencil does not work on aluminum. So I cannot free sketch these in pencil first and then come back with the pen, unfortunately. Let's grab the first one here. The label is going to start at the curve, the beginning of the curve here. I'm just going to come across to here. I will be outlining with the Sharpie pen first, just because this has the finest tip. Not bad. The outline for the dachshund begging, I'm going to also be doing with the Sharpie marker before filling in with the paint pens. I really hate first drafting with Sharpie. <laughs> it makes me nervous. Cheers, everyone. And the biggest thing to remember with arts and crafts is those little imperfections. People don't necessarily notice. They notice the thing as a whole.
All right, boys and girls, look what we got here. Next, we're gonna be cleaning up the edges and then adding the pop tabs to the top. So to clean up the edges and make these all uniform, I'm actually going to be using my Dremel tool with a grinding gear. Because I've mentioned before that I'm not teaching folks how to use power tools on this channel, I will be not showing this besides that the sound is atrocious and I'm not going to subject anyone to that. Except for myself, apparently. Cheers, everyone. See you in a few minutes. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I have officially made all of my mess. Dremel tool on foam definitely makes a little dust. However, these guys are looking pretty darn sharp. I'm kind of loving how they all look. I'm going to clean up Ooh, and try not to sneeze anymore because all this powder has definitely made me want to sneeze and I am just covered in dust. So <laughs> I am going to get tidied up a little bit and we are going to finish this up. Cheers, everyone. Chill! <laughs> Come here! Ooh. What do you think? Now that I've got the Dremel tool all done and I got all the edges cleaned off. How are you gonna attach them? Ah! I'm gonna make yeah. you I'm gonna make you leave first. <laughs> I just wanted you to see. I like them. I'm very pleased. I did a good job. At staying out of my way. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I am gonna have to pull out the crazy glue to finish these, so I need you to leave the room because you're gonna, you know bust up everything. All right, I'm gonna let the glue dry on these and we're gonna hang these babies up. It's gonna be pretty and I'm very excited. Cheers everybody. That means, oh, seriously? Damn it. You did just run your hand in <laughs> super glue. Did you do that on purpose? No. Oh my God. I was putting it open. Why would you have the super glue open and you're not even using Because it? I was starting. Let's see how it, scent, how it smells. I can't talk. <laughs> I stuck his darn hand in the super glue. Anyone who watched the 12 Days of Christmas, it's because of Chew that I was singing Five Fingers Glued to a Table. That's him. Because in our Crash and Burn craft, he glued his darn fingers to the table. And I just realized I left my bottle opener downstairs because of course I did. <laughs> This pencil does not work on aluminum. Ooh, had trouble with that word. Of course, I did just get a little bit of super glue on the front because it was on my hands, it was on my fingers, and I just ruined it. That is kryptonite to super chew. Da -da -da -da! Super chew! You're a goofball. Drink beer quicker than a speeding bullet. <laughs> Nope. Able to fall over small things on the floor with a single bound. Yeah. I think this would be lovely with Christmas dinner. Oh, ow! <laughs> Kitty cat just got on my lap. There she is. Yeah, she clawed you up pretty good, Kitty, <laughs> didn't she? <laughs> Say goodbye, Kitty.